Yeah, so this is a new feature for field service, um, supporting self-service scheduling for field service customers. Um, really, the goal here is to empower the, your customers to schedule on their own time um, via on, on, an online web portal. And so this portal is hosted on Power, Power, Power Apps portals, and it, uh, it has a flexible uh, layout so that, that your customers can access this on a mobile device, a tablet, or on a PC. Um, you know, some good scenarios for this would be things like if your customers have, a, say, a quarterly service visits, you, you could send the communication saying, you know, your, your service visits coming up, go ahead and self-schedule here. Pick, uh, pick a time that's convenient for you. Um, it's really easy for them to, to just do that. It'll save your business time and energy, you know, call volumes where they'd have to call in. Um, ideally, your, your customers are able to schedule visits more accurately than this way. Um, because they are doing it on their own time. They can see the schedule, less typos, all those type of good things. So let's do a quick demo of the experience. So this right here is a is the portal. I am I am logged in um, right now. Brianna Hernandez is my name. And I will uh, I'm currently self-scheduling for my business, which is Fourth Coffee. Um, I select my service products. And what these are behind the scenes is um, assets that are associated with my account. And so I'm gonna have service done on my main Espresso machine. Um, below my service product shows the location. This location is the, the uh, location of the account, unless this asset has a functional location associated with it, in which case the location of the service would be aligned with that functional location of that asset. <clears throat> After selecting their asset, the next step is to select their service. And so here, um, this is just gonna be a maintenance visit. So we will select the, the service type. And this service type uh, maps to the incident types in CRM. And these incident types are set up for the, you know, with, within your organization. And you can enable certain incident types to be enabled for the C2, for the, for the end customer and give them a friendly name. So if you have some, some arbitrary naming or some very technical naming, you can, you can give them a nice name that will be presented well to, the, to your end customer. Uh, the next step would be select dates and times. And so these dates and times are, are dates when we, after you selected your, uh, your, your, your asset, your incident type or your service product and service type, uh, we will filter these dates and times based on resource availability. We have lots of availability in the scenario. So I'm gonna select this date. And then you can select these times, this research. <laughs> my technician happens to be available all the time, working 24 hours a day. So that makes it very easy to pick a time. <clears throat> um, the last step for the customer is they can enter additional information. Um, so it may be like, please enter through back out. Um, and so uh, a couple other details on this page is all this content um, is configurable. So this header content at the top, this is just pre-canned content that you can update um, with the phone number that's that's linkable. Um, the service product, if you don't use the word, if you don't want to use the word service product, you can rename that service type, select date and time, time availability, and additional information. So if you need more specific additional information, you can, you can retitle that. <clears throat> the next step is simply to click book. And so on the back end right now, uh, we would be creating a work order for this service product and this incident type. And we'd also be creating a booking for the, the time and date the user has selected. A resource would be, would be assigned to this booking immediately into that slot. However, we expect that resource will be fungible, so we do not communicate to the end customer who the resource actually is. Um, it, you know, it, 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 we do that because um, we realize that, you know, there may be, you may have RSO running and optimize, um, you know, if they're scheduling a long ways out, you may, you may want to further optimize your resources, travel times, and all those good details. All right, so the scenario my scheduled, my booking just got scheduled. We just report to the user, you know, when it is, how long it's going to be, what time it starts, and then the address that the technician will be traveling to. <clears throat> In case of an issue, we have a configurable uh, contact inf information so they can call up the back office if they had to. While that's being booked, I'll be receiving an email confirming my booking. All right, we just received the, the confirmation email. Um, it confirms the, the booking ID, the date and time of the booking, and we also provide a reschedule link here. Let me re-log into the portal. This is an authenticated portal. 
All right. So with the reschedule scenario, um, and and again, they they receive a confirmation with the reschedule link, and <clears throat> Additionally, you can you have uh, we'll go through settings later, but you will have uh, they'll also receive a reminder, which will also have a, a reschedule link, which they can use to um, click back into the portal. They can see their current scheduled uh, service and their their service type and the duration and things, and they'll be able to reschedule their time, basically following the exact same flow that they followed last time. Select the new date, select the new time, and then booking that for that service. <clears throat> And then we can jump back in and look at what ha what is happening here in CRM. And so here we can go back to the schedule board and just see that that booking was scheduled. There we go. I think I believe it's number four. Uh, okay, so you'll see here the booking is scheduled. A resource is assigned. In the timeline, we'll see my my note that I had entered during the scheduling. And so this this booking is set up. <clears throat> Another good detail here to mention is. Um, when the when the scheduling is or when the booking is or the worker is created, well, anyway, when, when the work order is created, it will uh, it will the, the user who had scheduled will be assigned as the reported by contact, and this is the person that will receive all future communications. So, <clears throat> so for example, um, those reminder emails I mentioned earlier, they will be the one receiving that, and this is how we we um, make sure we're always sending it to the same same person that is is doing the scheduling. If for some reason that reported by contact is not there, um, we have a backup which will fall back to either the um, the primary contact or the supported by contact. And so that's the that's the core of the experience. So we can jump into how you set this up now. All right. <clears throat> and for setup, um, it all starts with the uh, the Power Portal. And so you'll find if you go to make.powerapps.com and uh, then create, you'll see the field service portal. And so this field service portal um, is easily provisioned. Just name it, you set your address, and then you set your desired language to your portal. Um, you can only have one portal per environment, which I already have one provisioned here. So, so then once you click create, it would take about a half an hour or so to spin up this portal. It will deploy all the required field service packages that come along with the portal to enable this experience. And it actually also includes the technician locator experience in the same portal. And those those two experiences are part of the portal, but then they're independently configured and, and enabled. After configuring your portal, um, you would see, you would receive a notification and you can click into the apps tab and you would see your portal configured. Um, from then, there's a few things you could do here. Um, as I mentioned, the, the portal itself requires authentication. And so you can go into uh, the portal settings and you can configure your authentication. And the portal itself uh, supports a number of different authentication methods, um, third parties, local authentication, um, AAD, B2B AD. Um, and then there's, there's pretty fairly easy uh, steps to walk through for each of these. Okay, the other uh, thing you may wanna do in the portal is you can go into the portal designer. And in the portal designer, we have templates for, for Track My Tech as well as the self-scheduling ex, uh, self experience. Um, here you're just seeing the landing page. If you're not signed in you would, and you have self-scheduling enabled, you would land on this page. All this content here is, is configurable, so you can, you can change this to as, as desired. Uh, the core self-scheduling experience, you can see the template in the portal maker here. Um, you cannot edit the the internal content here besides the highlighted content. These are what we refer to as content snippets. And you can edit, you can edit this content here, or you can also edit it in the, uh, in the field service settings. Uh, some actions you will want to do here, however, are, is the header and footer. And so the header and footer, um, you, the background color and the image itself, you'll want to upload your brand's image and set your brand's background color. Similar to the footer, if you have a legal footer requirement, you'll you'll want to update that footer um, to align with your 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 corporate messaging and, and guidelines. I guess one other thing to note is your header image. You'll want to up, actually upload two versions, one for mobile and one for desktop, just so you don't have scaling problems um, on the different device types. All right, um, the next thing you'd want to do for the configuration is go into the uh, flows. So let's go back out of the maker. Uh, 
All right. So your flows for these experiences can be found under, again under make.powerapps.com and then solutions. And then you'll see a solution called um, Dynamics 365 Field Service Power Apps Portal Flow. And you can click into those. And then there are three flows that would there are three flows that would be, need to be uh, enabled. The first one, create notification items for bookings, should be on by default. Um, you want to check that, just make sure it's on. There are also two flows, one for email and one for SMS. As mentioned, we send a, a portal invite via email, and we can also send the reminder messages and service completion messages via email. You can also send the reminder messages and service completion via SMS. The portal invite is currently email only. Uh, to configure these, you will want to have an exchange account for the email and then a SMS account. Uh, by default, the connector uses Twilio um, as you know, a, a popular a popular uh, SMS provider. And so it's fairly straightforward. You just click into the click into the flows, you you click into set up your permissions. Um, you enter your private keys for Twilio or your exchange, you log authenticate with the exchange account with Exchange, uh, save those, and you can just turn them on and off with the standard flow controls. And so that's the, the core of the setup. Um, back in field service, we have under uh, settings, we also have the customer portal settings. And this is common with tech locator and self-service schedule, as I mentioned. And so, so you see here, track my tech, self-service scheduling, which will be in preview, and then a number of other, other options, which we can walk through here quick. Uh, so self-service scheduling, um, as I mentioned, it is preview. When you enable this, you will receive a notification saying it is in preview, just to make sure you're ready. Um, it's not recommended to use in production right now, but it, great if you want to do this in any other works, uh, test it out, try it out, give us feedback. It's, it's all good. Um, the next setting here is send self-service scheduling experience to contacts. And so basically what happens here with this enabled is whenever a contact is associated with an active account, they will receive an email invite to the portal. Um, when you enable this, you actually are prompted and you can send this to, you can actually send this to, if you had this disabled and you have another number of contacts already in your system, you can send this to new and existing accounts. And that would be a way to invite all of your previous customers that are already in the system to this experience. Uh, and then message settings, these are all independently configured. Um, a couple of them apply to track my tech, others apply to self-scheduling and some apply to both. And so um, some are disabled when track my tech is disabled and, and vice versa. Um, so one thing, if, if both experiences are enabled, you will see those uh, reschedule links at the bottom of the messages for the reminder and the uh, reschedule. So if you want, need to reschedule and you reschedule again, we'll also send that. We also uh, provide quick links into those flows to make it easy to find those and configure those. And then this is where you set, as I mentioned, um, by default, uh, communications go to the reported by contact that is set when you schedule through self service scheduling. This is how you have fallbacks if that if you if that is uh, cleared out for some reason. Okay, and then uh, quickly on display settings. Again, here is the advanced configuration. This clicks into the portal maker, and then you can do some um, some of the internal uh, part of the configuration right here. So you can set your portal font styles. You can you can set your primary in text and background colors. These will apply to the central er center area of the portal. Um, they will not apply to the header and footer, um, you, but you can also set these directly in the po Power Apps portal maker. And then again, there's content snippets. These are the the strings of content or code that can be um, configured in one place and will reflect in the email, the SMS, and the portal itself. And then a couple uh, self-service scheduling specific settings, uh, lead time, min and max. And so this is basically saying, um, this is the minimum time a user could schedule a booking so from today. So basically, if, if we don't want to have anybody scheduling it within the next 48 hours, you'd set this to two. And that means they cannot schedule two days from now. Uh, similarly, maximum, um, this is basically right now would be saying 98, you can't schedule past 90 days from now. Um, as we showed in the demo, you can, a uh, user can select their asset. And so this is how you enable that. If you don't have any assets or you don't want them to select a specific asset, you can disable that. They'll jump right to the selecting the incident type or the, the service type. 
uh, additional details at the bottom of that scheduling portal. You could enter that. Um, you could enter additional details. This would just enable or disable that setting. And then maximum travel travel radius. This is an additional filter on the resource location, so that if you did not want, uh, if you didn't want to be able to schedule a resource which was, you know, in you know 200 miles away, you could set a maximum travel radius and it just filter those those resources. And so, um, so the number of responses back in your in your in your when you're selecting your date and time could be restricted by that. Um, one other thing I'll show here. Let me just switch back to my scheduling experience. Um, is in the incident type. I'll just show quick the setting it up for the C2. And so here's our quarterly maintenance. As I mentioned, you, you can enable each incident type for the C2. And so this would just simply enable that, and then you can give it a friendly name. And this would be the display name that would be displayed for C2. Okay, so I think that uh, mostly covers it. Um, I'm pretty excited about this feature. It will be uh, preview soon, and we'll 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 announce a GA date in the near future, um, and we'll have a a number of exciting new enhancements to this um, as part of GA. A few a few important notes about the preview feature. Um, this does currently support known users on, only, and by known users, I mean uh, users who are contacts in CRM. You, uh, a user could not just navigate directly into this portal, create their own account, and just begin scheduling, you know, create a contact in your in your CRM environment and start scheduling. They have to be created already in CRM, and then they can use this. Um, we would not support complex bookings. So bookings which have resource requirements, they're going to use, going to require multiple resources. Um, th th that, that's something we'll be looking at in the future. Um, again, uh, email invites are associated with the contacts of the bookings. As I mentioned, the, that contact that scheduled the booking is written as reported by, and so they they will be the ones receiving the communication for the you know the reminders and the the work complete. Um, this is a field service solution, and so it does it does require field service. It is creating specifically work orders. It is creating bookings. Um, and so I think those are the, the the key points of this feature. So excited uh, for people to start trying it and and see where it goes.